let's talk about how to create Jira-like gadgets inside of the Confluence UI to create the ultimate dashboard. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you're wondering how can I help support the channel, well, check out the links down below as I have links to my merch store, my paid courses, and most importantly, links to the sponsors that help make these videos possible. So go show them some love, try out their apps, and let's jump into Jira first. This video is sponsored by Release Team. All right, so in the wonderful world of Jira, we all know that we have the ability to create dashboards. And these dashboards are really, really cool. They're fun, they're exciting, right? They help you visualize what is going on with your projects, your deliverables, your goals, your objectives. Are you behind schedule? Are you on schedule? Are you ahead of schedule? We all know that never happens, but it gives you insight to understand what is your team doing? How are they trending? What's going on? Where are my problem areas? The problem here though is when you are in Jira, you go to your dashboards and you have a plethora of dashboards. Anybody can create a dashboard. And so communicating where that insight is gets to be a little bit more challenging because your project manager, stakeholders, everybody can create the dashboards. Everybody has this genius idea and they make a dashboard. But now as a stakeholder, as a director, as a VP, now I'm overburdened with holy moly, how many links do I have to different dashboards and where's the data that I actually want to see? Well, it gets very, very tricky at that point, right? You as an executive or as a stakeholder of a project, you now need to keep a list of all the different dashboards that are important to you so that you can go and find the relevant data. The little gadgets that go into the dashboard that actually give you the data, those are limited to a handful of various gadgets that you can add to a specific dashboard. So if you have a lot of data, so you're tracking a lot of metrics, then you're gonna have to break them up into multiple dashboards and thus you're tracking multiple links. So how do we solve this problem? Well, one way to solve the problem, which is the purpose of this video, is to move and recreate these dashboards within Confluence because in a Confluence page, you're not gonna be able to just put links because that's boring, but I'm gonna show you in this video how to recreate the very common and popular gadgets that are available in Jira inside of Confluence so that you can have one unified Confluence for everything. So this is gonna work out a lot better and hopefully not burden your stakeholders as much. So let's jump into Confluence here and let's talk about it. But before we do, let me just kind of, again, level set and tell you what we're gonna do. So one, this is the dashboard, right? Obviously I have a lot of custom charts for Jira here, so ignore that. But for the purpose of this video, we're only gonna take the out of the box stuff. So something like this two dimensional filter, um, this issue statistics here, these are all free. They all come with Jira and this is what we're going to be focusing on. All right. So once you know what we're recreating, the other thing you're going to want to know and have in mind is your filter. So the way this is going to work out is you need to know your filter names. You can do this by rebuilding JQS and whatnot, but very similar to how and when you are building a dashboard in Jira, filters is going to play a pivotal role, right? You need to know the project or at least the filter of what you're trying to recreate or what you're trying to pull data from so that that metric is meaningful. So we're going to keep that in mind and we're just going to use a sample one here. I have an overdue items filter and this is what we're going to be using as our example. So before you get too excited, right, make sure you know what you're trying to recreate in Confluence and know those filters because you're going to need both of that information in the next step, which is our final step in doing all this. So let's go over to Confluence and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a page. And this is where I recommend you have like a stakeholder page or a project page, something pretty grandiose because you want this page to be a centralized location where people can come to see maybe that roadmap that we've discussed in previous videos. Uh, you can see requirements, you can see the metrics all in one place without having to go to a thousand different places to get that information. So I'm just gonna call this stakeholder metrics and now I really want a piece of steak. So maybe we'll do that tonight. And then once you're here, this is where the fun begins. So what you're going to click on is on this little plus sign up here. And then we're going to click on view more. And over here on the left hand side, we have a couple of different options. But the one we're looking for is external content. Yes, you would think that it's under visuals and images, but that's not where that goes. But the one we're looking for is external navigation. And so when you click on external navigation and you would think it's also under reporting, but again, not there either, but here it is under external content. So as you look at this, I'm just going to very quickly 
flip on over to Jira, right? So take a look at these two dimensional filters, sprint burn down gadget, average H chart. So when I click into Jira and I go to edit a dashboard, look at this. We have average H chart right here. We have, obviously we're gonna skip all of the custom chart stuff, but we have things like filter results. We have filter counts, issue statistics. So as you can see, they're pretty much the exact same gadgets that are in Jira they're gonna be in Confluence. So we're gonna just basically leverage the exact same ones. If you had custom charts for Confluence, those would also show up so that you can recreate your custom charts for Jira gadgets inside of Confluence. So what are we gonna do here? So let's just do something simple. We're just gonna do uh, an issues statistics because that's my very favorite one. So I'm just gonna click on that one here, click on insert. So once you have your gadget selected, you're gonna click on insert. And then it basically operates just the way that Jira Gadget does, but within the UI of Confluence. So this is where, again, having your filter known is gonna help us, right? So I'm gonna do overdue item. So here's a filter, right? And these are gonna behave exactly the same way. So if you struggle when you were doing the dashboard in Jira, you're gonna struggle here. But if you set yourself up for success in Jira, then you're gonna be set up for success here. You pick your statistic type. I'm just gonna go assign it because I wanna know who's responsible for being late. And then you can do all the other options. Again, just copy what you have in Jira. I recommend you put these side to side, go to your configuration in Jira, do it like this. So you can copy what you already have in your working dashboard there and bring it over to Confluence. Hit save here. Now this is a double whammy save. You gotta hit save there, get a preview, and then you gotta hit save on the macro itself. So once you do that, ta-da, here it is. It's inside of Confluence. Today's tutorial is brought to you by the DevOps tool specialist at Release Team. Successful DevOps requires a balance of people, processes, and tools. Release Team's experts can help you succeed at every step along that journey. Our expert staff will work with you to understand your unique needs, explore your options, and deliver a solution tailored to your objectives and culture. Visit releaseteam.com today to see how we can help you realize your DevOps goals. And so all you got to do is rinse and repeat. You go and do everything for all those gadgets. But again, what's going to make this beautiful is that you're going to be able to centralize. So maybe you have gadgets across different pages. You're going to be able to put those all in the same spot, which is really where the value is added. This is why we're coming to Confluence because not part of this video, but also very related, right? We can add our, you can type in here and type in roadmap. So you can bring in your advanced roadmap from Jira. You can do your Jira roadmap gadgets. If you're using that one over in Jira, you have your ability to bring in a timeline as well. Right, so all of those things where you in Jira, you need to go to a bunch of different places, you can have them all in one location. And trust me, when I tell you that you want to make your stakeholders' lives as easy as possible, and it doesn't get easier than having a single link where they can see all the things that are important for their project. So, Confluence is going to be that answer. So, if you're getting complaints of, I don't know where things are in Jira put them in Confluence, or at the very, very least, if all of this is like just overburdening to you and you're like, what the heck am I doing? I don't understand any of this. At the very least, make a page and add links, right? So if you have a dashboard here, all these dashboards have URLs. Copy that URL, go up to your URL there and bring it here and paste it. Give it a little name. You can definitely come in over here and put go to the beginning and go dashboard important, whatever you want to call it, right? Make it a header. Right, you can do this at a very minimum, right? Even if you are struggling with this whole, man, I don't know how to do, recreate all these gadgets and stuff, put links to them. So at least your stakeholders have one place where they can go and find all the links. Maybe you have Power BI, maybe you have other third party metrics and reporting tools. We'll put the links all here and this is gonna drastically make your stakeholders' lives that much better, which is never a bad thing for you when your stakeholders are happy, especially if they're in your line of approving your paychecks, if you know what I mean. And now for a quick word from our sponsor. Want to learn about DevOps? Maybe you want to help a friend, relative, or supervisor better understand what DevOps is. Read DevOps Overture, what you need to know when starting a DevOps journey. The book recommended for anyone looking to get a firm understanding of DevOps principles. Software is everywhere. DevOps makes software better. Here's where you start. Go to www.releaseteam.com slash DevOps book to get your copy now. Make sure you check out the link down in the description down below so you can get a hold of Release Team. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. And if you know somebody that can benefit from this, right? Maybe somebody's just going off in Jira and making all kinds of dashboards and you're just getting overwhelmed with 
all the different links that you got to keep track of and your bookmark just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, share this video with them so that they can start condensing their information into one place. That's it for this video. Again, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Make sure you smash that like button. Don't forget to check out the links below because if you're wondering, hmm, this is such an amazing video. How can I help support this channel who makes such amazing videos for me and my company? Well, everything's like down there below. So specifically go check out those sponsors that help make these videos possible because if you try out their apps, if you use them, if you give them a world, most of them come with 30 day trials. Make sure you show them some love there. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. So fight and fight.